All right, so let's start with the news of the week for the beginning of December 2010. Yes, things have changed up that much. Starting off with some anime streaming news, Crunchyroll has started streaming Lucky Star. So for those of you who haven't had a chance to watch Lucky Star, and I can't imagine you not, but anyway, you can go over to Crunchyroll and do that. Also, uh, the Anime Network has started streaming Taisho Baseball Girls, an awesome anime. Came out a couple seasons ago about a couple of a bunch of girls playing baseball back in 1920s Japan. This is back when girls were meant were supposed to be very, you know, quiet and you know, running for a girl was not good. So the idea of girls playing baseball was just kind of kind of stunning. So there's a certain amount of sort of women's lib in the show, and it has this lovely soft uh, uh, color palette and, and visual style. It's just a very, very you know, uh, nice story. And it is, tries to be quite historically accurate. I mean, one of the girls, they're, you know, these, this girl's 14 years old, she is betrothed. That's what it was like back then. So, you can go out and, you can go out and get there, and a few other things have been streaming as well. If you want to see all the stuff that's streaming online, go to streamsuki.com, a site that I have that will send you to all of the uh, free legal anime streams out there. Um, in other news, Okinawa, as in the place in Japan, has sponsored an anime called Shimanchu Mirika. It is the story of three girls who are into music and dance, Okinawan stage productions, and karate. It should come out in March of 2011. And the idea was to promote local agricultural and industrial businesses through anime. So one of the rare cases where an actual you know, company is, or an actual uh, physical location is sponsoring an anime kind of to, uh, to get stuff going within that, you know, within that, that area. So that's, that's pretty cool. It's a good idea, I think. And hopefully it will result in more, uh, more anime, anime being made about actual like real live stuff. It's not just you know, magical girls and, and, and things like that. Um, for those of you living in the U.S. and who like Gantz, the live action Gantz film will be showing in the U.S. in January. That's right, it's going to be shown in theaters. doesn't mention how many theaters, so it'll probably be a very limited release. You can go and you can see that and see all the stuff with, you know, Naked K and all that stuff, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, it'll be showing in January. More details will be coming soon, I am sure. Um, this is interesting. The Bleach anime has caught up to the manga so closely that the, um, they're, they're releasing an episode of the anime um, basically one day after the manga story is released in, Sh in Weekly Shonen Jump. So um, there's this manga uh, prologue to a film and the film comes out the next day. Um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of kind of crazy. That's, that's what happens with a, a show when you're trying to do a weekly series and then you build up to the manga. So um, this is interesting because now it looks like they're trying to uh, make the manga and the anime more, more sort of side by side and we'll see how well that works. Um, this is kind of similar to um, uh, um, our, uh, Kite Kubo has been a lot more involved with um, with Bleach recently, um, just like Eiichiro Oda has been much more involved in, in, in One Piece. So, um, in fact, Kite Kubo was like overseeing production of the film. So that's, that's a good thing. Also, in anime news, all of you Australian fans, you lucky because Madman Entertainment has already licensed the Borrower Arietti, the most recent Studio Ghibli film, and they will be releasing that at some point. Uh, which is awesome. We'll be, you guys will be able to actually get to see that Ghibli film sometime soon. Uh, this is uh, not by Hayao Miyazaki or Isao Takahara, but by one of the other guiding lights of the Studio Ghibli uh, uh, studio. So, good for you. Moving on to some manga news. Uh, Morning Magazine, which is a Japanese manga magazine, has announced they're going to um, have an English language website and they're going to post their manga in English on the website. It's a seinen magazine, which is nice. So it's not shonen, you know, action stuff. It's more serious, more adult fare. And uh, it's part of a revamp of their website. It'll be the first step in Kodansha's plans. Kodansha um, sells morning. Um, to make the, the site available in multiple languages with simultaneous releases worldwide. So that means, you know, just to be clear, 
you know, when we get stuff over, over in other uh, countries, there's usually a delay. This is going to be coincident with the actual magazine's release. That can't get any, you know, any more simultaneous. It's not even you know, the manga volumes coming out. It's actual issues in the magazine. So that's pretty darn cool. Give you a feel, uh, Morning publishes. Let me just pull up to some of the stuff that Morning has published. Things like Cheese Sweet Home. Uh, what else? Stuff I'm not. Mizu no Iro Ginotsuki. And what else? Zipang. Tetsuwan Girl. Adam Girl. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Mighty Girl. Tetsuwan Girl. Uh, say Hello to Blackjack. Very important. Planet Test or Planet Eats, depending on how you do it. Piano no Mori. And uh, there's something else here that's. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Um, do, uh, Gone, actually, come out in the morning as well. So a lot of interesting stuff coming out in the morning. It would be very nice to see that uh, come out because then we can all read it, which would be awesome. So moving on from manga to some interesting miscellaneous news, that revised Tokyo Ordinance non-existent youth bill thing is still around. And uh, not only are all sorts of mangaka up in arms about it. So are a bunch of lawyers and writers. Uh, a, a writers group and a lawyers group got together to oppose this bill, which is kind of interesting. Uh, that you know, lawyers really? You think this would this would result in more litigation as opposed to less? But yes, uh, they a a group of Japanese lawyers have gotten together to basically say that's not good. Tokyo Bar Association, the actual bar, as well as the Japan Pen Club have gotten together to uh, oppose that. They're going to be meeting with these manga creators. They, they did, actually, last week to talk about the matter. And uh, they basically believe it, it will not be good for Japan in general. So kind of interesting and, and surprising. Um, we'll see. Th this bill is basically, for those who haven't been following it, is an attempt to restrict sale of stuff that basically depicts things like sex with children and things that would be illegal in real life. Um, either through government regulation or industry self-regulation and basically to say this stuff isn't cool. So we'll see. Uh, there was a, a different version that was uh, put out a while back and it got defeated. So who knows? But there's a lot of, there's more activity against it now than there was before. So the idea it's going to pass is unlikely. Um, what else? Uh, this is kind of cool. A Japanese jazz singer has started to fight cancer using classic anime themes. Um, this jazz singer has uh, basically put out a CD about uh, breast ca uh, she, she suffered from breast cancer, and she's releasing a CD of jazz covers of classic anime songs. So it's, gonna be, it's called Anime Jazz, and um, you can buy it, and as usual, it'll cost about $35 US. But that's cool, and about a third of that will go towards cancer research. Cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, this was kind of interesting. Uh, Big Lobe has uh, listed their top 10 anime news stories of 2010, which is completely non-scientific, just what are the big things anime-related in 2010. And their list is, number one, the big boom of K-On, and how, big, how well K-On has been doing. Uh, the life-size Evangelion statue that's going to be built. The, all the live-action adaptations of anime and manga and how well they're doing, like the um, that like Otaku Live concert. The success of Kamaket 78, which got over half a million visitors. The success of theatrical anime films, like the Baro Arietti. Uh, the passing of Satoshi Kon, obviously. The big boom of Gege Gay, the Gege Gay morning drama, which is a basic, based off Gege Gay no Kitaro, but apparently that did really, really well, and the place it's based on saw a big surge of popularity. Uh, then, number eight, the anime song Whirlwind of, of tie in songs, so how all of the image songs and so forth from anime series are doing so well on the Oricon chart. Um, they listed the launch of a web anime called Yutori chan, which is also by Big Lobe. So, huh? And then the success of anime voice actresses. They've actually turned into real full-scale idols as opposed to just sort of being self-contained within the anime world. They're now becoming pop idols outside of anime and manga. So those are certainly all interesting things happening in, in there. Finally, some wacky news. Uh, Bridgestone has started selling Dragon Ball-themed golf balls. No, I'm not kidding. So you can actually order 
golf balls that look like Dragon Balls. Uh, to give you an idea, here's what they actually look like, and then this is really what you get to buy in Japan is, yeah, you get Dragon Balls that you can putt with, <sighs> only in Japan. So that's all the news fit to print, and that is it from me, and thank you all for joining me, and uh, until next time, that's it from Brent's Anime News Corner, where Hatsune Miku is always cute. See you next time.